welcome to the first video in a series of two that is all about what is Japan really like today? I just got back from three weeks in Japan where we traveled all over the country doing incredible things. P.S. I highly recommend the place. So this first video is going to deal with the nitty gritty. I'm talking about the food, travel, packing and accommodation. The second video is going to get into different cities, things to do, the culture and the people. Sorry if I'm talking quite fast, I have a lot to get through, so let's get started. do you get accommodation in Japan? It's easy, you just Google it. <laughs> Honestly, if you're heading to a particular city, what I would recommend is that you just Google you know, accommodation in that city. If you're staying there for a week or more, you might want to look into hiring an apartment instead of staying in hotels. Have a look into what the actual apartment or hotel includes. Does it include internet? Does it include breakfast? Maybe even dinner? There are loads and loads of really well-priced hotels and different accommodation. And something that some people often stay at is Ryokans as well. Two main ways that we found accommodation over there was Airbnb and Google. Japan is of course famous for their rail system. So I do recommend before you go over there that you grab yourself one of these babies. It is a Japan Rail Pass. Now this is a JR Pass. It will allow you to travel on the JR line all around the country and in the major cities. Now depending how long that you're going to Japan for, this thing ain't cheap. This could work out to be over $800, okay? So it's a lot of money, but trust me, it is well worth it. You can use this JR Pass to pass through all sorts of different cities all over the country. And let me tell you what, when you're in Tokyo, you're going to be encountering loads of different rail systems. Let me show you. Okay? You can see that there are loads and loads of different rail companies that own loads of different lines, even in the one city. So that's why these sorts of things are very, very useful because then you can travel on the one system all over the city and plus get from one city to a completely different one very, very easily. But do remember that the main cities often have their preferred method of personal transportation. Like in Tokyo, it's all about the trains. You take trains everywhere. That's where it's at. But you go to Kyoto and it's all about the buses and bikes. This is the Kyoto City bus travel map, okay? There is method to the mayhem. It's a little bit chaotic. It can get very confusing and you could possibly get lost. But do remember that a lot of the important signs that you will need to know are still in English. Even in the audio, just listen, they've got an, a Japanese audio and then straight after it they've also got a English. Just keep your eyes peeled and those listening ears listening. I feel like such a teacher right now. And you'll get to your destination just fine. <laughs> cover the packing thing very very briefly but what I do recommend is that you pack light <sighs> yeah I went through hell <laughs> not all of the stations have escalators and elevators do pack light do bring a bag that has wheels on it bring only what you need and expect to buy when you're over there <laughs> Now this is one of the big things that I was sort of very nervous about and sort of stumbling over before we even went. But it wasn't that bad. I was very pleasantly surprised. Quite a few people do know English. It might be very, very little. They might sort of only get the point if you're doing all the bodily movements and the hand movements at the same time or pointing to pictures. You'll be able to get through a lot easier if you know your hiragana, katakana and some really basic vocabulary. I was saying sumimasen and arigatou gozaimasu all the freaking time. Be polite. Just polite if you are super duper polite. Look, this country, it just, it runs on politeness, okay? So just be polite and you'll be a-okay. Now some people do think about Japan and they think they're going to get a certain sort of experience. If you are after a certain sort of experience, research a little hard out about what you really want to experience when you're in Japan. The cities are very, very different. Like Tokyo is definitely all about the shopping, the technology. If you want to see the more traditional side of Japan, hit up Kyoto. It is very traditional. There are shrines and temples absolutely everywhere. So basically, just think about what do you want to experience in Japan? Traditional? Or modern. Plan ahead so you can get the most out of this fantastic country. Is it incredibly expensive? Some of it is. It really depends on what you want to do, what you want to experience. You could probably save up a couple of grand and head over there and do some fantastic shopping, but you could go over there with 
you know, maybe $500 to $1,000 and still have a pretty good time. It really depends on how long that you're staying there and if you've already prepaid for your accommodation and that sort of a thing. Conversion rates between the countries varies a lot. You know, I can't say to you when is a good time to buy because it's impossible to find out. But generally, this is what I went off. 100 Japanese yen is equal to about one Australian dollar. So their money does look a little bit different, of course. This is a five yen piece. This is 10 yen. This is obviously a 50 yen piece. That's your 100 yen. And the other one that I don't have here is a 500 yen piece. 500 yen is actually about $5. This is why it can be easy to spend your money because you'll see all this coinage in your purse and you'll be like, oh, you know, I've got heaps of, you know, it doesn't cost me anything. It can add up. Can you use the credit cards over there? Yes, you can, but not everywhere. A lot of places don't accept credit cards except for the major department stores and major tourist destinations. So what you might want to do is take out a big chunk of money, take it to a currency converter in your country, then when you go overseas you've got that money, it's all set ready to go. Then when you're over there, you can maybe get out money mm, once or twice when you're over there. But do keep in mind that your banks often charge not only a percentage but also a fee for you to take out money when you're overseas. Yeah. Food is everywhere in Japan and it is delicious, okay? The Japanese, they're, you know, they're a bit of a perfectionist society, so a lot of their food is just so top-notch. This is something that you might want to think about budgeting for, though, because, well, depending on how long you're staying there, I know I keep on saying that, but it really does depend on how long you're staying there. If you're in an apartment, for example, you might have your own little kitchen or a gas cooktop or something like that, so think about going to your local supermarket there in Japan and getting out all sorts of different food to make at home. It can be a lot cheaper and a lot of fun. Or you can stick to the noodle bars. Look, noodle bars you probably get a good meal and a drink for around $10, 10 to $12. If you're even going to restaurants and that sort of a thing, I know we went to an Italian restaurant when we were in Kyoto and we were able to get the lunch set so that was about three different entrees, a main meal and a drink and that cost around $22. It's not that expensive. I think it's just really expensive when you start going to those fancy schmancy places that sell the really top-notch Japanese traditional food. So if you're trying to save a little bit of money when you're over there, please do hit up your supermarkets and also your convenience stores because you can often get really good quality meals for very cheap. Supermarkets, like any supermarket I suppose, they put their fresh food that they've just made on sale at the end of the day just to try and get rid of it, but it is just so good and very, very cheap. Sometimes they slap 20, 30, 40% off some incredible meal. And convenience stores, you know, you can get your chicken and rice and all the rest of it there and they'll even microwave it for you in the shop. One of the things people often want to check out when they're in Japan, especially in Tokyo, is maybe some theme restaurants. These are the sorts of things which may be a little bit steep, but they could be quite a fun experience. I know we went to a maid cafe, that was top notch, that was amazing, but it not only costs you for the food, it costs you for the experience. I think it was about $10 for us to spend an hour there, and then we had to buy a meal and a drink as well. So you could go the traditional route in Japan and eat all the sushi, sea cucumber, eel, sea urchin. It wasn't quite my cup of tea, so I avoided that as much as possible. But you can do that if you want. Quite a few touristy places also sell their own you know, food things that are specific to them. Like when we went to Miyajima and they had these tiny little maple cakes there that had their own filling in them, they were delicious and I ate way too many of them. Oh my God. But just to let you know, anybody out there who is gluten intolerant, vegan or vegetarian, you're gonna be way out of luck. I'm sorry in Japan because unless you know how to say, um, can I have vegetarian or vegan or I'm gluten intolerant? Unless you know how to properly say those things and actually have a conversation with your waiter or anybody there about having a different sort of meal, you're just going to live on rice. That's it. We went to an okonomiyaki place in Tokyo and uh, every single okonomiyaki that we could have had there had pork. Every single one of them. Except for one, which said it was vegetarian, but it still had salmon. That's what it's like over there. They eat everything and meat is in pretty much everything. So yeah, unless you know how to say to your waiter, I can't eat this thing, can I have something else? You're out of luck. <laughs> the last thing I want to talk about on this video is shopping. Now one of the big questions is, is it expensive? 
yes and no. It really comes down to what you're buying and what your budget is like. The thing is, it can be easy to shop around while you're on a budget. There are 100 yen shops which sell loads and loads of wonderful little goodies for very, very cheap. And they can be fantastic little things to bring back to your family and friends. If you're after more traditional things, Kyoto is fantastic for that because they have so many temples and shrines and all of those places sell wonderful little traditional goodies. If you're after more modern things and technology, hit up Tokyo. That is the place to be. Akihabara is electric town. That's where you want to go for all your, your technology and gaming needs. Shibuya has the 10-9 stores there and is fantastic for clothing. Harajuku is also fantastic for clothing and knickknacks and all that sort of of a thing but it is a little bit younger depending when you're going as well we were in Tokyo just after New Year's and that's when they had their seven day sale so that started from about the second and it went right through and uh, that was brilliant for buying clothes so depending on what you're after can it be cheap yes totally it can be very inexpensive to buy things in Japan but if you're looking to buy some really nice silk kimonos and all the rest of the really traditional gear or even technology it can be very expensive so thank you for tuning in for part one. Part two is going to go over things like culture, the people, and what it's really like to be in Japan. Leave me any comments down below about anything that you want to know more about. Have I missed something here? Just let me know. Put a comment down there and I will get back to you. Hope you're all flipping fabulous and I will talk to you later. Bye!